Well, there's about a hundred things I could be doing this morning, and several I will have to go do before long. But before that, I thought I'd spend a few minutes on my newly acquired gems here. I'd like to see the crank out of that one, and off to be checked and maybe repaired, but probably not. And I'd like to see an oil pan and a fuel system on that one. Now, I've spent a good bit of time around the on-road version of this engine family, albeit with two more cylinders, in Dodge pickup trucks. Like that one over there. But I do have a good bit to learn about these industrial engines. For one thing, it appears they don't have a harmonic balancer. They just have pulleys. I guess that's because they're going to vibrate and you don't really care. But I also have to kind of shuffle through all the bits that came with this and figure out what the fuel system looks like, what the accessories look like. It's all similar, but not the same. Apparently, at some point in its life, this thing puked oil from the rear main seal. Must have been some time ago. Here's a look at the ruined number four rod journal. Not good. Even with that apart, this crank will not turn. I'm hoping it's just because the main caps were all loose and there's a bearing shell cocked in there. But I suppose it could have a ruined main as well. Well, here's the crank out. Other than number four rod, it looks just fine. Number four rod does not look just fine. Ooh, flat plane. Basically a Le Mans racer. The main bearing shells that were left in there, because someone has already had this apart, looked fine. No obvious damage. I think it's gonna be okay. The only thing I do have to worry about is rust in these bores. Clearly it sat a while after being uh, retired. Here's a look at the carnage on the rod end. There's evidence that it was quite hot as this was happening. And, um, yeah, not exactly beautiful. Here's the matching cap. Look at this pattern in here. Kind of funky. I'm guessing it was caused by repeated up and down strokes as the then ruined bearing was turning. Never seen marks like that. Kind of cool. Fun story. About a year ago, I traded an entire truck for a 24 valve parts engine with two pistons rusted solid in it, just to get one good piston and rod to fix Miles' truck. This time, well, it came with for free. This is the original ruined 4B rod and its original piston. This one is from a 12 valve from a pickup truck. This one is dated 04 of 93 and was made in Brazil. This one is dated 6 of 94 and was made in the USA. Otherwise, they are the same rod, should be just fine. The piston design is slightly different and you can see in the chamber, note the little tit, note the little tit is flat. So I'll be using the 4B piston. This one looks fine but it came with spares. The accessory layout on the industrial engine is similar. In fact, that's the same belt tensioner, but on a truck engine, six cylinder, that is down here, the alternator lives up there. And then there should be some kind of idler pulley here. I don't know where that's at, but we'll get there. Anyway, I have to decide if I'm gonna try and piece this setup together, or if I have to harvest the entire truck setup from a perfectly good six cylinder. Aha, uh -huh. there are two types of fan idler. One bolts on the head, which is what I have here, and one bolts down here, like on a truck. This engine clearly had the lower one, but it does not seem to be winning with us. So I may have to use the other. Here you can see the serpentine belt drive pulley for the crank. It's not a damper, just a pulley that bolts right on there. This also came with this V-belt drive idler pulley, which I think I could possibly turn into a crank pulley and use to drive, say, a power steering pump over here somewhere. Unfortunately, I only got one set of injection lines, but it does look like they fit. I'm gonna go ahead and randomly pick one of the injection pumps, and I've settled on the one that's on top. 
Well, judging by the paint, it was on that engine, but it was replaced at some point, I assume, with a remanufactured unit. And it's not too dirty. So that's a good sign, I guess. This thing has to be here for some reason. I don't know what the reason is yet. I was told it was in some kind of loader and it did run. So hopefully it's just here because someone really wanted it, but then changed their mind. Now I've only just realized that there's no fuel filter, which is fine, but there's also no fuel filter to get a number off of. It's important to keep another engine around when you're putting something together out of a pile of parts. The first Cummins I ever put together was a 1993 D350 Dually, which I bought in baskets. Luckily, I had an 89, and although it was not intercooled, it was close enough to kind of show me where everything went. Ha! Hey, I think I figured out why this is here. I'm guessing someone did not torque this correctly. And this spun. It's an obvious mark. And the woodruff key has been, uh, machined. So I guess we're gonna use that one. I don't get a woodruff key for this. All right, well, that is most of a fuel system. Injection pump, injection lines, return line. I went ahead and left it timed as it was on this engine because I didn't feel like loosening that bracket down there. It's about in the middle of the adjustment, but I could give it a little bit more chooch if I really wanted to. That lift pump seems to be from a third Cummins engine that was tan, and I do not have a lift pump to filter block line, so I'm gonna have to make one. I'm also gonna have to find a fitting to get a, an inlet from a can. There's also a teeny tiny return line back there that I'll have to make sure runs back into said can as well. Here's an oil fill. Uh, it's from a different engine too, but it's on there. I don't know what this is all about, but I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, I do hope there's a whole bunch of oil pan bolts in here somewhere, but I kind of doubt it. You know, I was as shocked as you probably will be that my local parts store had Cummins flywheel bolts in stock on the shelf. Most of my experience on these is on VE pump engines and of course 24 valves. I don't get to play with P pumps a whole bunch. So I was interested to learn the return line goes right back into the feed. I was kind of hoping I could do that on that so I don't have to run two new lines. We're pumping. We're pumping, we're still pumping. Oh, we're carefully pumping. We're patiently waiting and we're still waiting and we're pumping. I don't wanna get diesel everywhere. And I've had some fun times with P-pumps trying to bleed all the air out, so I'm trying to be thorough. Probably only get a couple shots before my poor jump box just checks out. Oh yeah, there's a pile of what was nearly priceless lumber when I acquired it right next to this engine that I don't want to cover in diesel as well. Did I say there wasn't a return line? What I meant was there's a return line you won't find until you get the system bled out. Uh, fuel shut off? Oh no, it doesn't have one. I did the delete. Well, that might be enough. Well, uh, I guess it's not enough. Poor little guy. 38%. Usually it stops trying at like 60, so that's pretty impressive on a diesel. Patiently waiting for jump box to charge. Added a battery. But it's gonna take more than that. Well, all right. Nothing is ever as straightforward or simple as you expect it to be. Oh, found the pump outlet. You know, some rules are suggestions and some are actual rules. I once left this Heavy duty cherry picker, holding up a 258 out of an old Jeep, out back behind the shop in the rain for about six months. 
After that, developed a bit of a leak. Well, I've dug through the parts collection looking for oil pan bolts and I've come up with two. In the smoke. Be good now. <laughs> that shouldn't do that. Let's not do that. Less bark. <laughs> I think I need to adjust this mount situation. Ah, eh, what's the worst that could happen? Why do you like that? There we go. single time I buy fuel hose I try to keep extra but it just never works out so anyway I jammed that return line into a heater hose and it kind of worked kind of that's a good sounding engine of course I knew it would be Delton pulled this out of a running driving 95 ram that had had a dash fire there's the transmission five speed that means it's got the spicy tune if I'm going to do this a lot, I guess I should rig up some kind of floor mounts. Or there's that option. All right, little buddy, you're next. But I need oil pan bolts, among other things. All in all, not a bad day. Now I got to go work on a 12 valve VE pump engine in a 2006 F350. Way better than the factory options, I'll tell you that. Yep, smells like money. It's like a Cummins, but bigger! <laughs> <laughs> 